dude, let's fucking go. I mean, we are just so back, baby. You just know that the MCU is back on its shenanigans when this meme returns. Sorry, Agatha, it is not looking too hot. Do people even know that that is coming out in September? Because my god, it is starting to look too perfect with these releases to a point where it feels like the MCU planned out this repeating cycle of dog shit on a screen followed by nostalgia bait, fan service, and key jangling just to reel us all back in for more shit on a screen. I can't say that it's been an effective formula to say the least. And with Marvel's latest announcement of Robert Downey Jr. returning to the franchise as Doctor Doom in the upcoming Avengers, it pretty much hits the nail on the head in terms of where Marvel feels like they are compared to where they want to be. And I see the vision of the overcorrection it seems like that announcement was. Oh, obviously I should also say that this is a spoiler-free review. Honestly, there is so much to talk about and engage with that isn't a major spoiler, so it's not even that hard. But I figured that I would throw that out there anyway. But Marvel's latest entry into the MCU with Deadpool and Wolverine is a perfect example of that vision that I just mentioned in the pivot and direction that Marvel obviously wants to take this franchise. In a disastrous and money hemorrhaging phase of little bros, has-beens, and C-list characters without the writing, structure, craft, or care to support them like with the C-list characters of the Infinity Saga, or even with the characters such as Deadpool and how much grace and love Ryan Reynolds has poured into that character, Marvel has brought out the big guns and the blank checkbooks in order to ensure a fun and on-brand viewing experience. And let me tell you, man did this movie not disappoint. Or maybe I shouldn't say that, because while Deadpool is less like an actual movie and more like a two and a half hour rated R advertisement about Deadpool and his introduction into the MCU, mixed in with a little cherry picked homage of the groundwork of the early 2000s superhero movies that walked so the MCU could run, it was still an incredibly fun time to say the least. And while the main reason for that is relatively obvious, I have to give a huge shout out to Ryan Reynolds and just the sheer commitment that he has to himself, us the audience, and to the character of Deadpool, to a point where I'm pretty sure his character has stepped up into the territory of becoming a household name, an accomplishment and feat that is not to be slept on in the eyes of the casual audience. And when you finally see that the budget that was given to this movie, the range of the jokes that this movie was allotted, and the finished product to cap off the Deadpool trilogy, it's hard to think of anyone else involved with this journey that deserves it more than he does. But with that, while I said this is spoiler free, I might as well set the scene with... In order to not get into anything too fancy, and because Deadpool pretty much just says and acts like us the audience for the majority of the movie, because of the Fox rights and the Marvel deal and blah 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 blah, Deadpool now finds himself in the world of the MCU, and with that comes universe rules. But before he can join, Deadpool's universe is on the brink of collapse due to an MCU rule that I will not get into, but with that, Deadpool sets out on an epic mission to find his purpose, save the universe, and show off for his girl, all in that order. Oh, as well as finding some friends along the way. But will Deadpool be able to overcome the new MCU rules and obstacles set upon him and find his place on his new journey of becoming a hero? But in reality, none of that plot bullshit even matters because when it comes to the actual movie and the way that it was paced and structured, you knew exactly what you were getting into if you saw the trailer, which is pretty much impossible not to see the trailer seeing how the marketing budget of this movie seemed to be. And while that might sound like a complaint, it is honestly quite the opposite seeing how we, the audience, are living through a time where mismarketing your movie in the initial trailers is unfortunately becoming more and more of a common strategy. If you're familiar with Ryan Reynolds' game and the earlier Deadpool movies and grasp the fact that Hugh Jackman is just here to have an absolute blast with the character he's poured his love, sweat, tears, and testosterone into for pretty much the entirety of my life, I can almost guarantee that this movie will deliver on every single aspect that you're looking for, if not more. And at this point, we might as well just start the glazing. Hugh Jackman is an absolute gem of an entertainer that we, the audience, have been blessed to witness. It is just a joy to watch him teaming up with a character with pretty much the same power that he has, just to watch him work his craft. 
from scenes that left your inner child smiling from ear to ear, from the gruesome fight choreography that reawakens the Logan vibes from within you, to the scenes that actually allow Hugh Jackman to show off some character work, from the fan service that was marketed, to the immersive experience it was to watch it all play out on your screen, it was exactly as advertised. And while it might be in my selfish nature as an audience member, I am happy that I was able to watch the man don the OG suit and wreck havoc with the claws again on the big screen. It was truly a spectacle. But in that same breath, an aspect of the movie that I equally want to commend is the comedic jokes and the self-deprecation that Marvel seems to actually be okay with. It's been known that Ryan Reynolds is just Ryan Reynolds at this point, therefore knowing the type of humor that comes with his brand. It could just be a lack of faith in the studio and what I believed was really lack of self-awareness when it came to the shitstorm they've created for themselves. But the range of jokes that were on the table was just more than expected, and in a way, appreciated given the current climate that they find themselves in with their core fandom. And while we have already seen comedy and action go together seamlessly in the MCU before, like with Thor Ragnarok, it kind of goes without saying that the action sequences and the set pieces were fantastic in this movie. The CGI didn't look like a total mess when compared to some of the MCU's latest projects like Ant-Man Quantum Dumbass or Secret Invasion, and when you have that Marvel budget thrown on your VFX effects in comparison to that Fox budget, well, the grand can only become grander. Overall, because I feel like there's only so much I can say without spoilers, and in reality, you should definitely go into this to experience it spoiler-free, I'm not here to say that the MCU is back. From my point of view, Deadpool and Wolverine was a movie that was going to succeed, rather or not it was under the Marvel logo. Hugh Jackman simply has that draw when it relates to his character, and I'm fully of the mindset that just because a movie like Deadpool and Wolverine can succeed, doesn't mean that Black Cap or the Thunderbolts can. But Marvel's self-awareness has been noticed and appreciated, so who am I to say? I'm just a bloke. But what I can say is that Deadpool and Wolverine delivered on everything that I as an audience member expected, from the over-the-top fight choreography, to the excellent musical score, the Ryan Reynolds style comedy, and to the fan service that was promised, and because of that, predictably so, Deadpool and Wolverine will more than likely finish off the year as the highest grossing movie of 2024, and another satisfying win for Marvel, but in a way, a questionable building block and momentum shift that they will no doubt try to build off of. But only the power of the meme holds the future. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, now relax because this is going to look a little weird, and trust me, obviously I did not predict this. The nameless tiers have been around for quite a while, but Deadpool and Wolverine is exactly the type of movie that belongs in the Toontown category. Not because of the quality of the film or lack of enjoyment, but because of the substance or lack thereof. I can fancy a dick joke, but when your movie is not a movie, but two hours of fan service, promotions, and homages, come on man, the nameless tears has integrity. But with that being said, that doesn't mean that Deadpool and Wolverine won't more than likely end up on my top 10 list at the end of the year. So of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description below, just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.